when the electrical signals propagate through a wire much faster than the period of its highest frequency component. We treat the wire as a perfect short circuit and assumes the voltage across the two ends are the same. This is what we learned in introductory electrical circuit courses on lump elements. However, in today's electronics, where operating clock frequency is of order billion of cycles per seconds, signals can acquire significant phase shift of order of its period. In this case, the wire will have to be modeled as transmission lines. In this video, we discuss equivalent circuit model of transmission lines and how current and voltage travel as propagating waves. We shall derive the complete solution of the lossless transmission lines. Consider two wires forming a closed circuit connecting the generator and the load. In elementary circuit course, we learned that the wires are modeled as short circuit, thus the voltage across the generator end should be equal to that at the load end. Let Z be the coordinate denoting the position along the wire of length L, with Z equals to minus L and 0 denoting the generator and load positions respectively. Certainly, the electrical signal has to take time to propagate from the generator to the load, so VZ at minus L should not be equal to VZ at 0. Electrical signals are electromagnetic waves, and they propagate with a finite speed of about 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second in free space. Suppose that the voltage at the generator end is given by cosine omega t, and the speed of the electrical wave is c. Then the time it takes the signal to travel the distance l will be l divided by c. This means the voltage at the load end will experience a phase shift as highlighted in red. If the signal wavelength is much larger than the length of the wire, then we can ignore this phase. However, if we are in the opposite limit, then this phase shift should be accounted for, and the simple model of a wire as a short circuit would not be accurate. Hence, there is a need for a more physical model when the wire is comparable or longer than the wavelength. We shall present the transmission lines model which can be viewed as a general physical model of a pair of wires. First, wires are electrical conductors and should in general have finite resistance, whose values is given by the Ohm's law. Second, electricity flowing through a wire will generate a magnetic field which produces an electromotive force that counteracts the current that produces it, an effect described by the Lenz's law, and is characterized by a finite inductance. Third, any pair of electrical conductors are capacitively coupled, and this capacitance increases when their separation is reduced. Finally, there is finite current leakage between conductors. This current leakage is characterized by a finite electrical conductance. Putting everything together, we have the following circuit model for the pair of wires known as the transmission line model. Here, we see the transmission line circuit is modeled with repeating R, L, G, C components. Delta Z denotes a unit length of the wire. Note that all these components are all normalized to the wire length L. For example, the R has a unit of ohm per meters, and L has a unit of Henry per meters and so on. Let's highlight the repeating unit of the circuit model as shown in blue. Since the unit is of length delta z, the voltage across the transmission lines are given by vz and vz plus delta z as shown. The current into and out at the two ends of this unit are also indicated, denoted as iz and iz plus delta z. Using Kirchhoff voltage law, we can write down the relation between the voltages at the two ends in its phasor representation, as shown. Taking the limit delta z to zero, we arrived at a first order differential equation relating the spatial derivative of vz with current, as shown in the yellow box. Using the Kirchhoff's current law, we can write down a relation for the current IZ and IZ plus delta Z in its phasor representation. 
taking the limit delta z to zero, we arrived at a first order differential equation relating the spatial derivative of iz with voltage, as shown in the yellow box. These two first order differential equations that we just derived are known as the telegrapher's equation. Differentiating equation 1 with respect to z, and substituting the expression for di dz from equation 2, we arrived at a second order differential equation for v in equation 3, where gamma is defined in terms of the line parameters as shown. An analogous second order differential equation for the current can also be derived as shown in equation 4. Gamma, as defined, is called the propagation constant. It is complex in general, with the real and imaginary component denoted by alpha and beta respectively. Alpha is also called the attenuation constant, and beta the phase constant. Equation 3 is a simple second-order differential equation whose solutions are exponential functions with either positive or negative exponent as shown. The general solution is then a superposition of the two exponential functions, with coefficients we denote as v0 plus and v0 minus, whose meaning we will explain in what follows. Substituting the general solution of vz into the first telegrapher equation allow us to relate the voltage to the current iz. Straightforward algebraic manipulation then allow us to arrive at an expression for the general solution of the current in analogous form to the voltage. Here, we have introduced a new parameter z0, which is called the characteristics impedance, which is also defined in terms of the line parameters. In summary, we have obtained the general solutions of V and I along the transmission lines as shown, expressed in terms of V0 plus and V0 minus, unknowns which we will have to determine later. I have to remind you that we are still in the phasor domain. Let's first make explicit the real and imaginary part of gamma in the expression for the voltage V. With this, we get a real exponential part and an exponential phase term. Written in the time domain, the term with the amplitude V0 plus is associated with the traveling wave propagating in plus Z direction, or the forward direction going towards the load. The term with the amplitude V0 minus is associated with the traveling wave propagating in the minus Z direction, or the backward direction going towards the generator. Hence, we see that the transmission line model admits solution that are propagating waves. One can also derive an analogous expression for the current in the time domain as shown. For obvious reasons, the forward and backward waves are also called the incident and reflected waves respectively. Here, we summarize the propagating wave solutions for the voltage and current for the transmission line in phasor form. Suppose that the line parameters, RLGC, are given, then only V0 plus and V0 minus are unknown. The rest of this video will be devoted to evaluating these two unknowns. Before we proceed, let's first remark on the meaning of the characteristic impedance Z0. If the transmission line is infinite in length, then the reflected wave will be zero as required by the attenuation factor alpha. Thus, the ratio of the voltage to the current at any point along the transmission line will then be exactly equal to Z0. Z0 is therefore the impedance of an infinite transmission line. We mentioned casually that the propagating electrical waves are electromagnetic waves. It will be instructive to elaborate this a bit more. We have here a depiction of the electric and magnetic fields permeating the cross-section space defined by a pair of transmission lines shown in orange. The current along the lines produces magnetic field encircling the lines as shown in red. The finite voltage between the wires establishes an electric field that source from one line and sink into the other as shown in blue. We see that the electric and magnetic fields are transverse at any point in space. Thus these air lines are called TEM lines. 
There are many other geometrical design of transmission lines that admits TEM modes as shown here. A unique property of all TEM transmission lines are that their line parameters can be related to the permittivity epsilon and permeability mu of the space that the fields permeate. First, the product of the L and C equals to the product of epsilon and mu. Second, the ratio of G and C equals the ratio of conductivity sigma and epsilon. Let's consider the simple case of air line. Let's also assume that the line resistance and conductance, R and G, are negligible, compared to the impedance of the inductive and capacitive components. In this case, the propagation constant, gamma, would reduce to a purely imaginary number defined only by the line parameters L and C, and the angular frequency omega. The attenuation factor, alpha, is zero. Using the property of ATEM line. The velocity of the wave, which is given by the ratio between omega and beta, will be a constant, defined only by the permeability and permittivity of the space. In free space, the speed will then reduce to the free space speed of light, 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. With this, we have also shown that signals in lossless TEM lines travel at a constant speed independent of the frequency, or what we call a dispersionless line. A dispersive line will lead to signal distortion. Most importantly, the signal attenuation is zero in lossless transmission lines. For your reference, we show here the line parameters for line with given diameter and line separation. Our S is the surface resistance of the wire. We see that the characteristic impedance is directly proportional to the free space impedance, differs only by a geometrical factor. In what follows, we shall focus our attention on the lossless TEM transmission lines. These are lines where R and G are negligible compared to the impedance of L and C. Hence, the attenuation exponential factor in the general solution for the voltage and current dropped off. The characteristic impedance Z0 is real in this case, and these waves travel at a constant speed. In what follows, we shall focus on determining the remaining two unknowns, namely the amplitudes V0 plus and V0 minus. We define the coordinate Z such that the generator and load locations are defined by Z equals to minus L and 0 respectively. We recall that the first term in the voltage expression is the incident wave, while the second term is the reflected wave. At the load location, we can relate the load impedance ZL in terms of its voltage and current at that location, yielding us the expression as shown. With some algebraic manipulation, we can obtain an expression for the ratio of V0 minus to V0 plus in terms of ZL and Z0. We call the ratio the reflection coefficient, since it expresses the fraction of reflection amplitude to incident amplitude. Thus, by specifying the load impedance ZL, it allows us to pin down one of the voltage amplitudes. We are now only left with one unknown, V0+. Plus. In similar vein, V0+, plus can also be determined by specifying the boundary condition on the generator side. Let us define an input impedance Zn, which is the impedance as seen from the generator end, at Z equals to minus L. Using Ohm's law, we can write Zn as ratio of the voltage to the current at that location as shown. Here, we introduced gamma L, the phase shifted reflection coefficient as shown. Thus, this allows us to replace the right side of the circuit containing the transmission lines and load impedance with Zn. Let's first determine an expression for V at Z equals minus L. Using the voltage divider rule, 
it allows us to write it in terms of the generator voltage VG, with the input and generator impedances Z in and ZG. Writing down again the general expression for the voltage. Connecting the two equations then allow us to write down an explicit expression for V0 plus in terms of the line parameters, the generator and load parameters. With this, we obtain the complete solutions for the lossless TEM transmission lines. The general solution for the voltage and current along the lines depends only on three parameters, the voltage amplitude V0 plus, the phase constant beta, and the reflection coefficient gamma. Beta depends only on the line parameters and frequency. Gamma can be determined by specifying the load impedance, in conjunction with the characteristic impedance Z0. With gamma, it allows us to determine gamma L and the input impedance Zn. The last unknown V0 plus can then be determined by specifying the generator voltage and impedance. Lastly, we remind you again the lossless TEM transmission line is dispersionless, where the electromagnetic waves propagate at the same speed irregardless of frequency. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes. Join our Free Science Academy Discord channel to discuss science and technology. High school students are welcome to join and post your questions, we will answer them during our free time.